Hey everyone, this is Lenka from Flying Architecture. Welcome to another modeling tutorial. Today we're gonna take a look at modeling the Murano armchair produced by Tom Furniture Company and designed by Alex Guffler. Here you can see the result. There are two curved parts for this armchair. And then four of these legs and three parts of this supporting frame. The first step, as usual, is to get reference pictures or drawings and dimensions and create starting curves that we will make surfaces from. And as this step is pretty similar to what we have already done in the IKEA Pollen chair tutorial, I prepared for you a Rhino file with the starting curves, so please download the file from the Flying Architecture website before moving on. Now in the file with the starting curves, I hide all the layers except for the backrest layer and we're gonna start with that. Now the curves that you can see here are actually a projection of the inner edges of the backrest to the right and top view. Now we're gonna use the curve to view command to get them into the right position in space. So curve to view. We're gonna select this curve and this curve. And then let's use it again for this and this curve. So now we have them in space, in their positions. And now let's use rebuild command so that we can make sure that both of these curves are continuous and have less control points. So rebuild. And let's use 40 control points and uh, degree 4. And here let's use 15. Oh, let, let's leave it at 40. Okay. Now we want to get the surface out of it. So let's draw a line here. And let's use sweep to command with the, these curves as rails and this as section curve. Okay. And it seems that that's how we want it. The ISO curves are parallel next to each other, so that's what we want. Okay, and um, actually, let me create a new layer for backrest. And let's put it over there. Okay, and this curve, I need to put it over here. Okay, so now we can turn that off. Now let's use the offset surface create a surface out of it. And because these are the inner edges, we're gonna be extending it this way. So let's use the distance of seven millimeters. Okay, enter. Okay, and we have a surface, uh, we have a poly surface out of it. Okay, and now we want to make these edges curved. And as these edges are pretty much defining the whole chair, we want to use a command which gives us better continuity. So we're gonna use the blend edge command instead of fillet edge. We're gonna use the radius of 11.5 millimeters for this edge and this edge, enter. Okay. 
And now for these uh, bottom edges, so let's just use the fillet edge command as these bottom edges are pretty small. So this one and this one. Now we want to have as well these two big edges curved as well. And again, remembering the step where we're going to map these surfaces, which means we want to have as few parts for mapping as possible. In this case, three, ideally. And if we used blend or fillet uh, edges command, we would get much more parts for mapping. So to overcome that, we're going to draw a cross section curve. And we're gonna use sweep uh, to command for that. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, let's first extract this and this surface. And let's invert the selection so that now we can delete this edge because we don't need it. Now we want to draw that cross section curve, right? So let's do it in the middle of this backrest. Let's go to the middle. It's over here. Middle and middle. Now we're in the right view. Now we want to have it curved the same way as with the small fillet, as with the radius point, point 0.2 millimeters actually. So let's use offset, just offset by point 0.2 millimeters. Let's hide this a bit. And now uh, let's use the both sides and uh, 3.3. So this is 3.5. Let's delete this. And now what we want to do is to blend, blend this line nicely with the edge. So let's do that. Let's use blend curve and let's use this and then the edge here. Okay. And let's use curvature and move, move it right into the middle. Okay. And let's mirror it to the other side. Uh, in the right view. Okay, and now we can join it together. We don't need this. And now we have this one cross section curve. And we're gonna use it for the sweep to command. So sweep to chain edges. Let's have the auto chain on. We're gonna chain this edge. And this edge and this cross section curve. All right. And now, what we have to do again, as pretty similar as with the in the IKEA Plunk tutorial, we have to use add slashes to get these isocurves perpendicular to the edges. So that's going to be a bit tedious process. So let me speed up the video and, th uh, and then I get back to you.
Okay, so now we are done with this. And we should have the sweep. Okay. And now let's just check when we join it all together that we get closed poly surface. And yes, it says here that it is a closed poly surface. And now let's check if the mapping is okay for for this surface for this poly surface actually and as we can see here yeah we have one two and three surfaces great that's actually pretty much what we want from this uh, backrest here and now we can move to the seat now with the seat, it's pretty much exactly the same process that we used for this backrest. So I'm gonna just do exactly the same, only in different position. Now let me just move this backrest to the layer over here. Okay, it's here and the cross section curve, let's move it to the backrest curves. Okay. Now we have this done and let's go to the seat and let's use uh, the curve to view command. And as I, as I said, it's pretty much exactly the same process. So I'm gonna speed up the video again.
Okay, so now we have the seat done and let's move to the legs. So I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna turn on the leg, legs, curves. And we're gonna extrude this extrude curve by minus 25 millimeters. I believe is the dimension. Okay. Let's uh, actually mirror it to the other side. And now we need to subtract these legs with the backrest. So we're gonna actually turn on the layers from which we created that backrest object. We're gonna copy the line. Use just control copy and control, control paste. Let's uh, put it into new layer helpers. And move it there. Now we need to move it down vertically because we actually used uh, the sweep to command and uh, it was extending over the edge here. So uh, let's let me move it vertically. And let me just turn on the backrest so that we can see better and then let's just do it again with vertically by minus now when we check it yeah it's down here so let's make sure that these points are not on the surface. They're extending over it so that we don't get any kind of Boolean difference issues. Now let's extrude the curve. Offset the surface. by 10 millimeters so that it's higher than the seven millimeters we used for the for the width of the backrest and now we can use the boolean difference all right Let me just check it if it's okay over here. Yeah, and it seems so. Now when I turn on the seat as well, what I want to do is that I want to curve this edge. And uh, I'm gonna use the blend edge command with the 11.5 radius. That's exactly what we used for the seat and for the backrest. And I want to use it here as well. Not this edge. Okay. Okay, and now we can see that it has exactly the same radius for the for the uh, blend uh, edge. Now, if you check out the image with the with the armchair, you can actually see that this, these legs, they're not from one part, but from three parts. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna split this object and have it in three parts so that it matches the actual real model. Let me turn it off here. I'm gonna turn on the legs again and here there are the lines I'm gonna extrude and I'm gonna split this 
Bring it with that. Now that's in three parts. And uh, let's use cap to actually close the hole here that results from using the split command. And I'm gonna use it for all of these. Yep. And now I'm gonna fill up the edges. Actually, first I'm gonna use again blend edge for the high radius, 4.7 at these core bottom sides of the chair here. Okay. And now for the rest of it, I'm gonna use fillet edge. And I'm gonna use the radius of 0.2. And then when you check out the image again with the pic or the picture with the with the chair, I want to have this part where it uh, is close together. I want to have that uh, lower, so I'm gonna use 0.1. this one and I'm gonna use it for all of the sides there here as well and I'm gonna use it point one and here and over here okay I subtract it as well the edge over there which I didn't want so let me just finish it up here Okay, and now um, this edge, I want to have it 0.2. Okay, now it should be it should be alright. And uh, as well, remember to actually use the fillet at the same time for all of these edges, as Reiner then calculates all the these inner parts together, so you don't get any kind of fillet issues there. I'm going to use enter, and enter, and let's see. Okay, so now it's done. We can see that it's, it's pretty nice over here. Yeah, it's okay. And here as well. So now we can clearly see that it's not from one part, but these are actually three parts put together. And now if you're wondering how we're gonna map it that we didn't worry about it at all, we're gonna use just simple box mapping for that because as you can see these are parts that are not together so we just use that and that'll be fine. We don't have to use the UV editor for that. So that's, that's the legs that we have here. We can check the whole, the whole chair. Yeah, and we can see that it matches nicely. And the last part that we have to do is the supporting frame. And let me just turn on the 
curves here. And what we have to do is that we use simple extrude curve. And we're going to extrude it. And here as well. On both sides. And make sure that we get this edge. Okay, and we're going to extrude it this as well. And actually, the width of these parts is 25 millimeters, and this is in the middle. So we're going to extrude it to both sides, and we're going to use 12.5 uh, millimeters so that we get the same width okay and now we can see that again we need to use the boolean difference command okay but now we have to make sure that we didn't uh, we're not gonna delete it be deleting the input. Okay. So we have it. Nicely done. And the last part that we have to do is to use the fillet again. And we're gonna fillet all the edges. Again, as these are uh, wooden parts in reality. So we'll be trying to match that. Okay, let me just first put the wax into its separate layer so I can see that I didn't do that. Wax. And then, okay, supporting frame. I don't want to put there the uh, curves actually. So this way, turn it off. And I'm gonna use the fillet edge with 0.2 radius. Fill it all together. Okay, and now when it's filleted, let's check out the whole chair. So congratulations, you finished another tutorial and you have this nice Murano armchair done. Let's hear each other in the next tutorial.